Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the fantasy series, The Wheel of Time. This will be episode 6, The Flame of Tavalon. Again, this is a weekly podcast I'm doing. I apologize if I'm not doing more to my millions of fans. With what was going on with my life and work being... Uh, available i'm just taking as much as i can so i've been cutting it down now getting to the show the wheel of time i am super enjoying it i from beginning to end i have had nothing but joy and a smile on my face i've discussed in some of these podcasts this acknowledgement that the books can't be done in the way they are without cutting stuff out because if you think the Lord of the Rings was cut up, or some other fantasy series, the Wheel of Time books are huge. I've described this. This is 700 pages, 900 pages, over a thousand, with the glossary in the back, and these are huge books. But as I go through the shows, and in my brain registers, oh, did they give this line to someone else? Are they using prophecy and letting a person speak of it? Because a lot of the chapters in the book would start off with a prophecy, um, something that came out of the book. So that's still there, but there's nothing here that's making me dislike the show. I don't find myself um, weighing heavy on some of these dilemmas that might some, some people or real big fans might have, which are justified, I guess, you know, for everybody. You know, there are parts in the book that people really want fleshed out, possibly. And I don't know if you can do that. And looking at the... Game of Thrones as a whole, I don't know if um, they wanted to risk it. I think this is going to be more a free-form, fun show rather than what Game of Thrones settled into. So, I see the aspects that could be problems for people, and I can acknowledge them. But I'll say again, I'm up to episode 6, The Flame of Tavalon, and I'm having a ball. I am a huge fan of the books. These shows, these episodes are really getting me. The last one got me in the feels. I was just immersed in every episode. I find myself really captivated. I see a strength in the characters and the actors. Now, again, this could be the bias because I know their progression through 14 books or whatever it is, uh, prequels. and I know the ending the last battle, the whole thing. I kind of know what some of these characters grow into or what their potential is. And could that be weighing in on the actors? Sure. Like, I'm expecting them to pull it off. But I see the talent there. I'm really impressed. The settings are uh, spectacular, really good. I never feel, at times, totally drawn out by a clear matte painting or... CGI, although it's definitely going to be hard in any uh, genre like this to to put their staple on magic and certain things and the elements of, that make sword and sorcery and fantasy um, really stand out. And I think they're doing a superb job at that. They did something really cool and they reveal in this episode um, an actual cursed item. And from Dungeons and Dragons, you always... Uh, it's always in your mind, and in the books, it was a real prominent thing, and I'm glad they touched on it and really brought it to the forefront. And one of the characters called Matt is, um, you led to believe he could be the Dragon Reborn, he's having problems, and the show has its own, you know, um, its own play on if men channel, women, uh, you know, lock them up, study them, gentle them which means they take their, their power away and all they want to do is die. Now, this episode centers on the Amaralyn Seat, which is the head of the Aes Sedai, Suwan Sanche. I love the actress, the child actress who plays a young and the older one. And I thought it was a great way to do a little flashback scene to show where she comes from and where she is as like a queen or... Um, she's got that much power. Uh, there's that um, element to her, that uh, persona that she personifies incredibly 
and you see where it comes from as a child. Now, this is done in the books over chapters and in in depth. I think they did it great. Great way to show that this woman comes from a fishing village. Really down and dirty, get your hands dirty, you know, type of life. She had a father who was, um, uh, looks like, you know, apparently lost his hand and she's using her magic to help in their fishing and she gets spotted in some effect the village she's in is targeted and she has to go to the white tower and then you progress and you see she's this head of the Aes Sedai the women who rule in a sense and in the books you you get this maybe they'll do it in the show also but all the nations in this world look to the Amarillan seat for settling disputes and, um, you know, their, uh, their weight is felt on the world. And they're the ones that people go to look to. Although it has a, a side effect, which Logan in this episode, the false dragon, alludes to. That the Aes Sedai are getting weaker. And that, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, if some man said he was coming for the Amelin seat... He would be killed. It would be, it would be s- foolishness. But yet, when this false dragon said he was going for the Amarillan seat, he had thousands at his back. Meaning that the world is ready for change. They're going to upseat the ruling, you know, uh, Amarillan seat and, you know, change things for the better in their eyes. And then you find out this relationship between the Amarillan and Moraine. And I thought it was great. It was slightly alluded to in the books as like pillow friends and stuff. But they, they went there. I didn't find myself um, rolling my eyes. And there's just such great actresses. I'm really falling in love with Rosamund Pike. If that's how you pronounce her name, I'm sorry. Great actress. She really fits the role. Um, but it's focused on them. Moraine's uh, visit to the tower, her getting scolded, and her, you know, her, she's at odds with the other Ajas, if you want to call them the other colors, the reds, the greens, the blues, and how the blues are seen as secret finders, and they keep secrets, and she gets targeted by uh, one of the the reds, uh, Leandrin, and she gets made uh, a spectacle, and but behind the scenes, when it cuts to Amarillan saying, you know, uh, your p- punishment will be given tomorrow, you find out that they really care for each other. They, you know, somewhat in love, or lovers, and in the, in the effect that the show goes to. But that Moraine leaves the tower, and you find out that they are breaking the rules. So all in all, a fascinating show. You're getting the characters coming together. Loyal's in it again. The Builder, uh, so happy. There are elements when everything comes together that I was happy to see. And again, I could see it in my, my head. This is, you know, it's too fast. There's so much in the book that is not covered. But again, there are issues that I've had with other things that I've noticed. And it stuck with me and it bothered me. I'm six episodes in here and I'm not bothered by it. Maybe it's just age and, like I said, time of life and things that are going on. But I'm so happy such a well-done show is being made off a fantasy series that I am in love with. So it's not being done horrible. Like, every week I watch the Shannara series, and I I bring this up in a lot of my podcasts, because Terry Brooks is my favorite. The Shannara series is my favorite world, in a sense, unless you want to compare... First time magic, which is Dragonlance and Forgotten Realms with Drizzt and, you know, Tannen and Karim and Raceland. Anyway, this is, for me, exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Is it perfect? No. Does it have little um, hiccups here and there? Sure. And I think any first season will have it. And it's got a goal. It's going for the title of the first book is the last episode title. So this is the Flame of Tarvalon, episode 6. Number 7 will be the Dark Along the Ways. But episode 8 is the Eye of the World, which is the first book. Now they did come out in, the, in later in time and do prequels, which showed um, Moraine and Lan and things like that. And, but 
it all, for all intents and purposes, the first book is The Eye of the World, and it culminates that storyline, so you got an idea where it's going to go. And I think they have an opportunity here to even course correct. You could have the last episode of The Eye of the World and the first book. And then you can recap, you could broaden out the second season to fill in the first book's, uh, I don't know if you want to call it mistakes or missed opportunities, and flesh it out and make it bigger. I don't know how they're looking at this as a production thing. Is it, oh, we'll give you eight episodes and we know that it's going to be eight episodes for 14 seasons? Is that the goal? Or can you see season two being 12 episodes, season three being 10, depending on how much they feel they need to put in? But so far, season one, episode six, The Wheel of Time, The Flame of Tavalon, is an excellent episode. It's maybe not my favorite of them, but... I am so happy I'm in a good place. It gives me all the good feelings. Like Again, like I said, I'm not finding myself rolling my eyes and getting annoyed. And it's sitting with me like it did with the Shinara series and the low quality and some of the ch- choices they made. Um, like, I love the actor who played Alanon in the Shinara series, but he wasn't Alanon. The weapon, the way his magic worked, it just didn't work for me. Although I love the Elf Stones and Will. Like, there were certain aspects I liked. And the actresses and people on that show were phenomenal. But altogether as a production, as a product, it didn't work. And it left me, episode to episode, not excited. I'm excited for episode 7. I'm excited for the last chapter of this for season 1. I am super excited. It's, It's a... I don't know, I felt this when I watched The Legend of the Seeker too, which totally fucked up everything with the books and changed a lot, but I found myself just enjoying the show week to week, and and it, maybe that shows I have bad taste, but just like uh, I mention things all the time, like Green Lantern movie, I enjoy the movie, I recognize its faults, and it's not a great good movie, but I don't see that here. I see this is a very good show that I am loving because it's catered for me. It's, it was perfectly made for me. And, again, there's nuances to this episode with politics and what's going on with the Amelin. She's the head of the towers, or the tower, and all the Ajas, but her power is slipping, things are changing, the last battle is coming, and when you get to the end of the episode where they're going to use the ways to travel, I just was at the edge of my seat, like, and there was no action, there's been no super fights and action since the first couple episodes there's just a settling in of good storytelling in my opinion powerful characters growing uh, underlying talent of you know that I, I see the potential in and maybe I'll be disappointed but so far I am not this episode might have focused a lot on Moraine and the Admiral and Seat her and, you know, well, she says in one part, call me Suan Sanche to, you know, she meets the people. And there's also a direct um, acknowledgement that Moraine has found the dragon. But it could be one of the five or all five. And she talks about a prophecy about a multi headed dragon, you know. And I know, like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking D&D, Tiamat, and the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. I am so in love with the show i'm just trying to be calm and focus and balance about you know its aspects i still think it should it needs a stronger soundtrack um i'm loving the camera movements and the cinematography so i i, I i'm not having problems there and that's just a slight nitpick that i can't even like i love the opening theme i find myself you know getting ready to do my stuff and checking my games and i'm just having a ball with the show I'm loving it. I recommend everybody watch it. I mean, this might have been a politics in the tower type episode, but you see the reuniting of the characters, where they're headed next, the um, alluding to the battle that has to be triggered. It's almost like uh, Moraine and Suan know that by bringing all five, because they don't know which one is the dragon, and exposing them to this dark one, was it going to go to the eye of the world where he was imprisoned? 
that they're going to force a confrontation that no one will survive except for the dragon, if prophecy is correct. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's a interesting dilemma going on and unfolding. And this is what I like better. I, I don't care about, I was so bored in some of the seasons of Game of Thrones. And although I, again, I understand the, the talent and the love that went into that show and how good it was, just not for me. This is seems like it was made for me. I and I'm dying to see other characters come back. I'm interested in them, but it's not an annoyance. I don't feel like well. Get look, it's the first season, right? I could go four seasons in and go and they're doing the same thing as Game of Thrones, and uh, you know I want to focus on this character. What are these news characters? Because this game, this series of novels has it all there. There is potential for a lot of cluster fucking and a lot of book stuff being shoved in because they need to do it but if they're making the right choices and giving uh uh you know a satisfying story with great special effects and um you hit the points that the books really are their staple i'm gonna be fine with it i'm so gonna be fine with it more than fine obviously eight uh, six episodes in and i even try to reevaluate i'll go back and look at an episode and that past episode i really struggle to get through because it's you know it just gets to me um in a good way though which is meant to be and i love the portrayal of loyal again he's called the builder he's a a, a old year in the books the sometimes feared but beloved respected and the way they talk and everything is so immersive for me I'm, i i get travel i get transported right into the books and again, yes, I might be aware of certain things they're skipping over and going, okay, well, they got two episodes left, and that ends the first season. That's the first book. Wow, there's so much you could have done. Again, missed opportunities, but enough to make the show bad? No. Enough to maybe upset loyal followers of the series? Sure. I, I, I'm, I'm totally down with that. But you know what? This is a show done so well that you can pick this up and do a three hours Lord of the Rings movie. It, it doesn't have to be the end all of this fantasy series. Where, again, I'm going to use Sonara series as comparison. I think that was received so negatively that you. I don't think the chances of getting a, you know, premier director to direct the Shinara, the Shinara series as a trilogy in the movies, and it having the weight that it deserves. This, you can see the move, first movie coming out, The Eye of the World. And then you got three hours to do all this when you've got eight here. They'll have to make the same decisions. It's, it's hard. You know, especially when you look at the format of these books, the way they're written. And this guy, Robert Jordan, who, the series, who wrote the series, is a phenomenal writer. He's... he's the successor to Tolkien in, in, the, in the circles. You can do Google searches and like look into it if you want. Research. He's that good and talented. You cannot do that on a show. You'd have to have 24 episode seasons. Right? Over an hour. Now, I would do it. <laughs> I, would pu- I would push for that. But if this is someone's vision, I'm going with it. I'm along for the ride. And I'm enjoying every step. I find little nitpicks, or uh, am I a little confused once in a while about what they're doing with certain characters? Yeah, and I think that's a good thing for me. You know, you know the book so well, you've read them so many times. Like I said, I got one on my table, this one in my car when I'm working. It's just really fun. So much joy I'm getting from this show, so I'm thankful that it's being done with such... Um, attention to what I perceive as the staples of the book. And I might get disagreement, I understand it, and you know, there's no right or wrong in this sense, where I'm saying, you know, I'm recognizing that, yeah, I can see a good portion of the loyal followers of this book series disappointed. Oh, uh, look, I get it, you know, maybe there's a certain aspect of certain books I like. But when you look at the format of his books, or you compare them to, let's say, the Dragonlance, or uh, the Forgotten Realms books, R.A. Salvatore has the Drizzt books. Those are meant for movies. 
the 350 pages of my book that I wrote, um, The Mushroom King. Book one of the Deadly Edition Chronicles is more movie themed in the way the rhythm of the book goes before you get to the end. Now, was it purposely done like that? Kind of, no. Like, I edited a lot of my first, well, it's only my first and only novel, although I have a plan for uh, 12 books, comic book, cartoon, uh, trading card game, all that stuff. There's, um, you know, there's an understanding where you have a, at least a, an idea of the rhythm of the book and what would um, flesh it out nice. So I could see someone taking my first book and going, I want to do season one of the first book. Okay, then you might want my input on some of the things I edited or the things I thought might have been too drawn out. Or, But in any case, I am fascinated with where they're going. I'm super excited and eager. I'm immersed every episode. There's not one actress or actor that turns me off. Now, yes, there are a couple that I feel really shine. What they're doing with Nynaeve's character is fucking superb. I love it. And making illusions like from the books, lines from the books, like Moraine has found the most powerful female channel in a thousand years. And he led, led credence to the false dragon Loghain's words about these Aes Sedai are losing their connection to the source or the power. Now, in the lore of the books, because the Aes Sedai, who the male, because remember, back in the days, it was with male and female. The ones that sided with the dragon became the Forsaken. The Dark One tainted the source. And it affects the males. That's why they go insane. But, as he grows, the Aes Sedai who have been settled, uh, I think, the, the, they're alluding to their ability to tap the source is almost dying out and Moraine by going to the two rivers where the old blood runs strong has found the resurgence the next generation oh it's just because I say I know the book so it's a little weird but give the show a chance you've got six episodes enough to determine if you're going to like it or not usually I go three and I, I kind of make up my mind and you know shows like Titans and things like that a little rocky look hell one of my favorite shows ever, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that, or is it Star Trek The Next Generation. They're rocky first seasons. I'm going to say this isn't Rocky. This looks like a... They know what they're doing. They're doing it very well. And they're making maybe obvious choices that they can course correct later. Or maybe I won't get the bonding of certain things or certain characters and certain dialogues that went off of fucking chapters. Or, you know... Um, 28 pages of battle strategies from one of the characters that might be coming in and that you can do in the book that you can't do here. So, I am overjoyed every time I watch it. Excited. I recommend the show. It is almost everything I would want as a Dungeons & Dragons player. DM, Dungeon Master, Game Master. I see all the elements of greatness here. If it's not put together yet, if all the puzzle pieces haven't come together, I could understand that again i'm biased i'm a it's one of my favorite series favorite writers in that sense um it's beloved to me it's i hold it dear to my heart it, it influences all my worlds i create and dungeons my own you know campaign worlds if you want to lack of a better word and i'm going to keep gushing about the show so watch it this was episode six the flame of tarvalon based on the robert jordan Here's a middle initial series, The Wheel of Time. This episode was centered on Suwan Sanche, the Amaralyn Seat, the head of the Aes Sedai, the female queen, let's say, or leader uh, that everybody goes to, her, her connection to Moraine and their past, and a reuniting of the characters. And guess what? We're going for the battle, the last battle. You could end the show at first, end of the first season. <laughs> I mean, you know, if they wanted to. And let's hope that doesn't happen. Anyway. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.